everybody, Jace Allen here from Rum Runner Guitars. Welcome back to the Guitar Dungeon. Today, we are going to create a 3D model in Vetric Aspire for a Stratocaster style neck, complete with the 3D modeling. So stick around. So if you've been following my video series on CNC machining guitar bodies using Vetric Aspire, then you know that uh, one of the things I promised to do is to create a program for a Stratocaster style neck. And I've had a few requests to do this also. So today is the day. We're going to uh, do a tutorial on how to not only cut out the neck, the neck profile, the drill holes for the tuners, but we're also going to do the 3D carving for these contours. And uh, it was a kind of a difficult process to figure out how to do it, but I've, I've got it figured out and I think it's gonna look pretty good. I haven't cut one out yet, but uh, I wanted to do the tutorial first so that you could get an idea of how, how it works. And, uh, and then uh, my next video will be actually cutting one of these out I think it'll require a little bit of manual finishing, you know, when it's when it's done. Um, you know, we can certainly tweak the program as we sort of learn a little bit more about it. But the great thing about Vetric Aspire is the fact that it does 3D modeling inside the program. Because a lot of people will use like Rhino or uh, Fusion 360 or Blender to create their 3D contours and then they'll import them into Vetric as an STL file and apply it to the model. But Vetric Aspire is a very powerful 3D modeling capabilities. So why not do it right inside the program? And that's what we're doing here. So let's get started. Okay, so we wanna open Aspire and create a new file. And we want a double-sided. And uh, I'm gonna go with a five inch by 30 inch piece of material and it's got to be three quarters of an inch thick. So your, you know, your the size material you're using can be pretty much any size you want, but you got to use a three quarter inch piece of material. And that is the neck thickness without uh, a fretboard on it because we'll add the fretboard later. XY datum position, I use the lower left. You can use whatever you want, but we're going to be using lower left for this. And then flip direction for the, for the two side is going to be horizontal. Okay, hit OK. There's your material. You want to go to File, Import, Import Vectors. You want Stratocaster, Fender Stratocaster 62 Neck, and that will be in the description, a link to that. And then you want to go to Transform Objects, Align Selected Objects, Align to Material. You want to select the middle one, and it plops it in. So now the first thing we're going to want to do is select the whole thing, and then hold Shift, Put your box around these drill holes because you don't want to select those for this particular thing. And then you want to come over here to edit objects, join, join open vectors, join, close, and then come up here to layer, right click, delete, delete empty. I like to work clean. I don't want any layers that aren't needed. Double click this and rename it neck outline you can stay red that's fine and then you want to select these drill holes right click uh, move to layer and we'll create a new layer for those tuning key holes and we'll make that orange and then these actually are not closed shapes there's a way to tell if you select and then come over here to vector validator search selected see it tells you four see these aren't closed okay so i think you can do them all together so hit join close and now these are joined and that's important when you go to create your tool path so let's create a tool path for these real quick Select your outline, toolpath, profile toolpath. Uh, you want it, uh, your three quarters of an inch thick. 
So we'll do 0.8. That should get us all the way through the uh, material. And we want to do tabs. We want to create some tabs. Uh, I do a, two, a quarter inch long by eighth inch thick tab. And then just add a couple tabs. You don't need a ton of them. Just enough to hold it in place when it's cutting. Okay. And then finish off by the neck outline. And we want to make sure machine vectors is outside. End mill quarter inch, that's fine. And hit calculate. And it'll warn you that it's cutting through. That's fine, hit okay. Back to 2D view. If you come up here to the, this is why we use uh, layers. Uh, if you right click on the tuning keyholes layer and select select layer vectors it'll select everything in that layer and you come over here to your tool paths you want uh, same thing profile you want a quarter inch end mill this time you want to be inside the vector and no tabs and we'll call these tuning the holes calculate it'll warn you you're cutting through that's fine. We'll do reset preview, preview all sides and see what we get. So there, there's the beginning of our neck. Okay. Okay. So now we need to create this curve. We're doing that curve right there. Our headstock rather is a little over just little over a half inch. 0.54 is what I got on my calipers. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull in another vector, import, import vectors, and we want strat neck side view DXF. Open that up. Align it so that it's on your board here. And then we want to just kind of move it out of the way. So we want to go to move. We'll just move it up out of the way. If you hold Alt down, it holds it in place. And we'll bring a guideline over just to see if it's lined up, which it is. Okay. So we can get rid of the fretboard because we're doing that at a later date. So we'll get rid of all the fretboard data. Use this trim to cut that part off. Boom. See that? And same here. Boom. Cut that off. And it leaves a little piece there. I don't know why. And we'll get rid of that. Okay. So that's that's what we're shooting for. So we're actually working on this curve right here. We'll import our vector. And we want headstock cross-section. DXF. Okay. So what we are getting here is basically this. I've just pulled this out. Okay. See how you can see that is basically that. It's a little longer because we will need some space, but see, that's basically that. That. You could, you know, when you pull this in, you can do that yourself if you want to, but I just thought it would be quicker to, to make that a different file. And that's a continuous piece. So if you want to line it up to here and then move your guideline over to the end of it, that's fine. And then click it and then we'll just move it out of the way. And then we're going to throw a guideline right here. Okay. So now... We need to create two lines that start pretty much on the edge of the material and go all the way almost to the edge of the material. So there's one line. You hit escape, it'll release that. So there's a line there. You can't really see it because of the guideline, but I'll delete the guidelines as I go. So see there's a line. And then we'll create another line.
delete this guideline. Okay, so you have two lines. So we're going to move those to their own layer. Select them both, right click, move to layer. We'll call it new layer. Let's see, we'll call them, let's call these headstock parts. We'll just call it parts, headstock parts. And we'll make these, how about fuchsia? Bright, whatever, pink. Okay. And then I like to come up here every once in a while, right click and do delete empty because it, I don't know, for some reason you, when you import things in, vectors in, it creates a bunch of empty layers for some reason. And then this, this layer one is actually the neck side view. We'll make that a dark, just a, yeah, there we go. There we go. And then this we can move to headstock parts. Okay, so we want to select both of these. Those are our rails that we're going to sweep between. We want to go to Modeling Tools, create a shape by sweeping between, between two rails. You want to use Selection. You want to see how it changes, and you want to make sure your arrows are going the same direction. And then you want to see how the cursor has changed to Profile, the cross section. See, it says Select Vectors to Turn as a cross section. So this is your cross section, so you click that. And then you want to click on the red line. See how it, there's a red dot here and a red dot here. That means that this side of the uh, cross section is on this side. Otherwise, it would be backwards. It's a little weird how it works on here, but just trust me that, that you want to make sure that this is the red dot. That indicates where it's starting. Okay. Then you hit Apply and Start New Component and close and then component double click and shape height is just shy of three quarters if you come up here to your split screen and then click y you can see the you can see the let me hold control and move it over you can see your your, pro, your uh, model what we've just created so yeah Okay, so you want to go to your split screen to your 3D view. You want to make sure your shape height is three quarter and your base height is zero. Close that out. And then you can come here, click on it, the component, go to tool paths, go to 3D rough, and everything looks good here. There's no errors, hit OK. And it's gonna recalculate everything. Sometimes it does it twice, no, nope. okay. So 3D rough, so we're gonna call this head stock 3D rough. And then close that, <clears throat> come up to your 2D view, click the profile or the con uh, component again up here to 3D finish tool path. Uh, now we're a ball nose quarter inch. And then we want uh, head stock 3D finish. Calculate. And preview all sides. And we'll see what we got. It's pretty good. There we go. And you can mask off this area here so it doesn't cut all this because it doesn't, you know, it's not necessary to cut all this. So you can actually mask part of this off so that it'll only cut, you know, what you need. But that's a, that's something we can deal with later. <clears throat> okay. There's the front. Okay, so now we flip to the back. And actually we want, we want this next side view, right click on that and select layer vectors. Actually you can group it together too. You can come over here to group on your drawing, edit object group. Now it's grouped. 
So now if you right click on it, we want to copy to, actually we can move it, we don't need it on this layer anymore. So we can move to layer, or move to other side, sorry. There we go. So now when you flip, there it is, it's on the other side. Should be lined up with the, well, let's line it up with the back. Yes, it is. It's pretty much lined up with the back. Okay. So now we want to do another import vectors. And we're going to grab Stratocaster Neck Radii DXF. Line that up again. So there's cross sections for the back of the neck so actually i want to flip this we'll flip this vertical because i want the back of the neck uh, upwards and then we're going to bring in another vector file import vectors Stratocaster, Fender Stratocaster neck back. Okay, there we go. So what this is, is the rails that you're going to use to sweep these cross sections through. Now, if you go to your, oh, the Electric Herald, I'm just kind of shortcutting a little bit. There is a file in here, and I think I've included it, this one here, Fender Stratocaster Complete Plans. If you download that PDF, you actually have cross sections of the neck, you have your profile, you have all the data, and then you have these, see these shapes here, which is what you want. And what I did was, I and this is PDF, so it's it's vectored, you know, it'd be way easier to pull this into another program to extract just the pieces you want rather than importing this whole thing into Vectric. You can do it, it's just, it's going to take a lot of work to pull out these things. You might want to do it in a separate file and then bring them in, because really all, you, all you're looking for are these contours here. So I kind of did a shortcut and that was to create these shapes and so what i did was i took this contour here and that contour split them in half and then as you can see i put a line down the you know connected the two with a line and then i drew another line this way and actually we need to reposition this so there we go there we go because this has to be these lines have to be outside of the neck shape the sides of the neck so what you're doing is you're creating these rails and then we're going to use these cross sections to sweep between them i hope this makes sense because what you're doing is for these contours Say like this was the contour. You're going to your node editing and you're right clicking on that and you're cutting the vector. So now it's effectively cut in half. See that? There'd be another one on the other side. And then you're, you're, connecting these two with a straight line and then you select the two join them together this is all pretty much you know techniques that we've been using the entire time but it's using this shape and i'm just doing a shortcut here so we can we can move things along so if anybody has any questions or clarification for clarification, you can send a message and I'll do my best. So you need to select these two. Okay, no, another thing we need to do before we proceed is we need a 
guideline right here and then a guideline right where this curve sort of ends and then we need a guideline here and a guideline kind of where that curve ends and then these things you want to make sure there that's the right height and then that's the right height yep okay and then this should be the same height as that yep okay so we're good there everything should be the right height same with this okay so we select these two these are going to be our rails and we come over here to the modeling tab and we go model under modeling tools we go create shape by sweeping between two rail vectors use selection Make sure your arrows are going in the same direction. And then you want to click this as your first cross section. And click here. And then you want to click this next one. You want to put place it right on that guideline. And then it's going to create a goofy angle. So you want to square that up to be straight across. And then the next... Contour, you're going to grab that and do the same thing. Click that here. Square that up. Then go down to the end. Grab that one. Click here. Oops. Slide that over. Grab this one. Slide that over. And then, last but not least, that one there. And that's the end. Okay. And then you want to click on this one and remove the check mark on smooth. And then do the same thing on this one. Because that'll make those angles. It'll make those angles down quite a bit sharper which is what you want okay so basically what we're doing is we're creating these are half of the cross section of the, the neck so if you were to cut the neck here and here and here and here those arcs are the cross section. Then we cut it again this way. So you've got a half of the cross section. And because uh, the way we want to sweep those cross sections between the two vectors, it works better it's half. So that's how you're, that's what you're doing. You're creating these cross sections. And you can make them any shape you want, you know. So now we do the second portion. We want to, okay, before we close this, we want to do start new component. So then that's done. If you want to come up here to your split screen, you can see the, you can see it there. And if you double click this, you want to make sure that your height, shape height is three quarters. Sometimes it'll, it'll get skewed depending on what's going on. And then you want your base height to be, uh, Three eighths. So if you do, let's see if we do, if we close our tool paths, see this white line is the center, pretty much the center. So that should intersect right through there. So that should be, that should be good. And then we, we'll be doing some tweaking after we get it all, all laid out. So now we want to grab these two and repeat the process for the bottom or the second half. Create shape, sweeping between two rails, use selection. Then the arrows are going the same direction. Select here, select here, move that over, select this, move that over try to get on the guideline guide guideline 
And then same thing here. Here. And here. Okay. And then again, you want to click on these, just these end, these second one in, uh, and remove the check mark on smooth. Okay. Hit apply. Hit start new component. Close that under component two. You do your split screen. You can see that it's too too tall. You want to make sure it's three quarters of an inch in height, and your base height is three eighths, negative three eighths. And then that's that's going to be a pretty pretty accurate representation of the neck, the back of the neck. So now we want to do our tool paths. Which is pretty simple. We just click. Highlight component one, come over here to 3D rough. And then sometimes it'll complain a little bit because it says the model thickness is not right. I don't know why it does this, but it does. So if you just go to set and you type in the thickness of your of your board, which is what it is, and keep scale both sides, keep that selected, hit apply, and then it, it will accept everything. And then it wants to recalculate. It'll recalculate and go through all this stuff. And then you're and then you want to name this uh, neck contour. Uh, let's do neck 3D rough. And then we'll do close that. Do fine. Calculate. Uh, oh, did I get a chance to name it? I want that neck 3D inch. Okay. Now I had them both selected at the same time, so I think it created a toolpath for both halves at once. Which would be great if it did. Yep. Cool. Look at that. Oops. And there, see, there's your tabs. So I actually want to probably put a tab here and then here because these tabs are getting wiped out when this neck gets uh, carved out. So you might want to put a tab here at the end. Let's do that right now. So. We don't, uh, let's flip to the front. Great. Well, actually, yeah, flip to the front, do neck outline, and then just remove, or just, you can just move, I think you just move those tabs. Oops. Sorry, you got to go to tabs, edit. There you go. You just, you can just move them. And I'll put another one here. There we go. There now it's now it won't fall out. <laughs> you got tabs in there that'll hold it. That looks pretty good. That looks like a pretty good neck. There's a little goofy things going on here that you can probably sand down manually. Uh, if we get rid of the tabs. We get rid of the tabs. Preview all sides. Then we double click on the waist and it goes away. So we can kind of see better what it looks like. Looks pretty darn good. And for some reason this is flattened off more. 
I'm not sure what's going on there. It should be rounded. This should be part of the contour, the way it's rounded, but maybe I've got, I don't know, I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe it's because I've got the, I've got this too far away. And so it's, you know, that curve part is in where it gets cut off when the shape, you know, when the uh, neck contour comes in. So you might want to make these, let me turn these off so you can see, you might want to make these lines actually a lot closer to there. That's probably what's going on. Let's check into that. Let's redo. Let's redo that. Let's move this as close as we can. There we go. That's probably better. See, it's really, really close now. We'll do the same thing on the bottom. Ooh, lots of points. That we could probably cut vector, delete those, and put a new one in there. There we go. There. We'll do the same thing over here. That's actually pretty close already. <clears throat> There we go. Join those together. Whoops, that's not good. out a little bit there okay we'll see how that works I'll join these together now we'll sweep between these two and see if we get a little bit of improvement on the contour
Okay, sweep between use selection. Click that. Boom. 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 Again, we want to undo that, take uncheck that smooth checkbox. There we go. There we go. Okay, apply. Oh, we want to check that box. Smooth, take that off. Apply. Start new component. Select these. Click that. Whoa, what happened there? <laughs> Let's try that again. Select these. Modeling, modeling tools, rails, use selection. Click that. Click here. Oh, what is going on? Oh, see, our arrows aren't going in the right direction. So, so we'll close this. We'll select that. Modeling tools create shape. Use selection. Okay. And then you see here our arrows are not going in the same direction. So we'll click on this one. Reverse rail. See, now they're going in the same direction. That's important. Click here. Click here, very good, that works. Click this, click there, straighten that up. Click here, straighten that up. And then we'll click this one, turn off smooth. Click that one, click there, straighten that up. Click this one, click here, straighten that up, click on this, uncheck smooth, click this last piece, and check. And then we do apply, and then we do start new component. And we split screen, and we look at what we've got. But then it's up too high, so we want to, that's less than three quarter, that's fine. And then base height has to drop. And then under component two, base height has to drop. There you go. There, that's, that's perfect. Just about perfect. All right, so then select both of them from one of tool paths three uh okay so it's giving us an error of course set the model thickness to 0.75 okay recalculates everything and then we want to say nick 3d rough and then close and then finish neck 3d finish calculate reset preview preview all sides and if we double click on that it removes the waste that's way better still not perfect because that that router bit's coming through and shaving that off but that's good i mean we can do the rest of that by hand it looks pretty good
Yeah, that looks pretty darn good. We'll definitely tweak it some more as we go along because I'm going to run this uh, on the CNC and see what we get. And uh, I know we're going to have to do a little cleanup here. But that's, uh, that's looking really good. That gets us a lot farther faster than doing it by hand. So there you go. That's the, uh, that's the neck. And uh, we just go in and save our tool paths to uh, a USB key and uh, send it off. So there you go. So we'll see you next time, Guitar Dungeon.